Is it possible to actually cool your computer with a cube of ice? After all, when you place ice on a CPU, even at room temperature, the ice instantly starts melting. This isn't some camera trick or sped up footage. This reaction is thanks to the incredibly high thermal conductivity of the copper integrated heat spreader. Meaning that when the CPU is actually installed in a computer and gets even hotter, the ice should melt even quicker, right? Well, it does indeed, and if you check out this top left line graph measuring the CPU temperature, the ice also cools down the computer as well. However, this introduces the first of many challenges we'll face in today's video. Water. Water, as you may know, is great at conducting electricity. Well, technically it's the particles inside the water that cause this conductivity, but for the sake of this video, we'll just say plainly that water plus computer equals bad. One way around this is to make our PC hydrophobic, but we will come back to this idea in a little bit because in the short term, a much simpler solution is just to use a cup. Something metal is preferred like this measuring cup, and to use it, we just have to remember to apply some thermal paste underneath it so that the IHS can pass heat along accordingly. And all right, this actually is not an awful way to cool our CPU, all things considered. As you can see, the temps are visibly decreasing at the cost of, well, our ice melting. But at least this time, the melted water is contained in our cup. At this point, our main constraint is just how much ice we can put into the cup itself. But even if we add, you know, more ice into it, we'll eventually notice that the temperature of the CPU will rise once the majority of the ice has melted, regardless of how much we put in to begin with. So to solve this, I started envisioning an ice dispensing solution similar to a napkin holder that you might find at Costco. You know, one of those ones where you can pull out the one from the bottom and then as soon as you do that, the next one's ready to go. Now, as a quick way to prototype this idea, I started out with a paper towel tube, cut it in half and simply secured it to our metal cup with tape. I know, pretty high tech. But now I had a place to dump even more ice with only the two cubes at the bottom of each side able to make contact with the metal. Now, due to the more limited surface area, the temps were initially a bit higher than just tossing in a couple cubes right into the cup, but this feels a bit more sustainable due to the cubes in the queue maintaining their coldness for a little bit longer. Obviously, cardboard is not the most ideal material to use with water due to, well, this happening, but this setup shows promise, so I think it's time to take things up a notch. Now, if you happen to want to follow along at home, I'd recommend, first of all, not doing this with your main computer, just in case something goes terribly wrong. I personally like shopping secondhand for components that I use in my PC experiments, and marketplaces like Jawa make it super convenient to find these types of used components. Jawa is also sponsoring today's video, so in addition to buying used components, you know you can also buy entire custom PCs from there, as well as brand new components like CPUs, GPUs, you name it, even thermal paste, which actually, wait, why are there no thermal paste listings? Uh, you know, I'll just go ahead and fill that space by making a listing for some Easter paste. There, perfect. Jawa is pretty great. Their mission in general is to be the go-to marketplace for gamers and tech enthusiasts to buy and sell hardware at a reasonable price, and they do this in a handful of ways. First of all, there are both buyer and seller protections in place, and on top of that, they manually vet all of the listings to only ensure that high-quality items are being presented. And as an added layer of trust, because I know how it can feel to buy expensive tech from strangers online, Jawa also vets sellers. So you can find these vetted sellers and have even more confidence in the transaction. Finally, Jawa is committed to actually being a community. They do have an active Discord server where you can go in and ask questions about all of this kind of stuff. All of that makes Jawa way more enticing than your typical secondhand market, especially for computer stuff. So the next time that you consider either buying an entire custom PC or putting one together yourself for, say, a tech tinkering project, make sure to consider Jawa. I'll leave a link down below for you to get started. And I will also leave a link to my thermal paste listing in case you want some of that as well. Okay, so now that our dispenser queue idea seems like it has teeth, I went out and grabbed a much larger vinyl tube for the next iteration. We're getting rid of the cardboard tube. This time around, I want to contain all of the melted water within the tube itself. We'll see why in a little bit, but to do so, I ended up needing to use this epoxy compound to bind the two together hopefully creating a waterproof seal in the process. Now, I did consider using Flex Seal here like I have in the past when completely waterproofing an entire PC, but once the epoxy hardened, it did seem to do the trick. So now we can go ahead and fill up our much larger ice cube dispenser tube thing with even more ice than before. And this ended up working out fantastic. The ice up at the very top being insulated from the heat down below, first of all, is great. And second, the added pressure of having this many ice cubes stacked on top of each other additionally helps at making sure the bottom one is constantly in contact with the metal plate. However, despite how well this works, over time, a new issue has become apparent. Buoyancy. 
On the bright side, our waterproof seal is in fact waterproof, but because of so, all of the melted water stays, well, right inside of the tube. But since ice is less dense than liquid water, at some point, the ice will actually float higher and higher away from the metal bottom. This is interesting because while it doesn't cause our CPU to spike in temperature right away, having that extra layer of liquid for our ice to have to cool to then in turn cool the CPU, it makes for inefficient cooling. But thankfully, I think I have a solution. Since water is still the culprit here, we just need to find a way to get rid of the water once it's melted. Well, once the ice has melted. And so hypothetically, if we were to drill a quarter inch hole into the side of our vinyl tube here, and then, you know, slot in a, a, a smaller quarter inch tube itself. Well, on paper, gravity should be able to help us out to pull out any of the excess water, keeping our ice as low as possible in our setup. And since it worked so well before, I'll just go ahead and use the same compound to adhere these two together and, you know, make that waterproof seal. And well, after a quick test, this is looking very promising. If I wasn't so confident that this wasn't going to leak, this would again be a perfect time to just coat our entire motherboard with Vaseline or maybe even nail polish to give that extra precaution against water spills. But you know what? Let's go ahead and live life on the edge. It's time to put this ice cube cooled PC to test. was not expecting this to work so well, but as you can see, even after gaming on the integrated graphics of this, you know, poor Intel CPU, the temps stayed so reasonable, maxing out at what? 40 degrees Celsius after an entire gaming session? That's nuts, but you know, okay. So the next question is, how long do you think this will actually last? After 30 minutes or so, the ice has dropped from, you know, the very top, to here. So by rough extrapolation, maybe we can assume that this will last between two and a half and five hours at consistent use. It's honestly not too bad considering this is all you know, passively cooled and under a decent amount of stress, but let's find out how accurate that estimate is. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and leave this Haven GPU benchmark playing in time to see how long it takes for all of the ice to melt. But one thing we can say for certain right away is that our water draining solution is definitely doing the trick. And on top of that, an added benefit is that whenever we need a drink of water to stay hydrated while gaming, we constantly have this glass refilling right next to us at all times. All right, at this point, it's been around three hours or so. I think I started the test around 4 p.m. and now it's just past seven and the ice is all but melted. The crazy thing is, if we scroll back over those three hours, the CPU temperature never ramped up at all. The ice was able to keep keep a very steady temperature basically up until now. If we didn't have the water draining out with this extra little tube, I do believe the water would naturally heat up to the point where the temperature would increase over time. But because we're draining that out and allowing ice to keep pushing down, well, it's just constantly keeping it cool. Now, there is one last glaring issue that we haven't yet talked about, but before that, let's go ahead and revisit our initial question. Can ice cubes actually cool a computer? And the answer is yes, absolutely. And honestly, without too much tinkering, you can pretty easily circumvent the main drawbacks of, well, using ice cubes to cool your computer. All it took was literally a measuring cup and a couple of tubes. But the next main question is, is this practical? The obvious answer is, well, no. With fans and AIOs existing, this just introduces a ton more work of refilling ice cubes every single time you want to use your computer. But I do actually find something pretty interesting about that drawback. Maybe it's just because it feels novel, but having a physical limitation to how much you can use an electronic is kind of cool. In a world where, at least in my life, more and more time is being spent online, current solutions to use electronics less are, one, willpower, which let's be honest is crazy hard, or two, usage-based limitations like an app timer or something like that. But now imagine being limited by how much ice was left inside of your computer, because once it's melted, your PC would overheat and eventually shut down. Again, not very practical, but I do think it's cool, even more so because visually you can see how much ice is left in your computer. It's almost like filling up your car with gas, but when you run out of it, you end up being more productive because you can go out in the real world and, you know, touch grass or something. <laughs> like imagine telling your friend, oh, oh, I can only game for five more ice cubes and then I got to get off, you know, kind of cool. But okay, now the final issue with this setup that you might have noticed is orientation. Typically, the motherboard of your computer is not horizontal. Most people have their mobos upright, which would certainly make this ice cooler implementation even more difficult. If only there was some other component that got super hot, needed to be actively cooled with the fan and is typically in the horizontal orientation. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, the GPU might actually be a far better recipient of our ice cooler here than a CPU. After all, if we go ahead and open up this here graphics card, we can see that we do have full access to a processor here for our measuring cup to sit on top of, 
And honestly, there's even less constraints of the VRM or anything else getting in our way. Although this does lead to another orientation problem because GPUs typically orient their processor downwards. But technically, nothing is stopping us from installing our GPU as normal, but then just, you know, flipping around our entire PC such that the GPU processor is fully exposed facing upwards. Now, let me know if you think we should continue experimenting with ice cooling our GPU, or if it's simply too ridiculous to keep tinkering with. Also, let me know in the comments down below if you would use an ice cooled cooler in your computer at home. But anyway, that's all I have for you. So thanks again to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Remember, you can check out tons of PC components and full custom computers at the link below. And with that, I'm Mr. Yeast your tech tinkerer, and I'll catch you in the next one.